Is there anyone, anyone else you want to mention? Lord in prayer and and uh, I want to give you just a few moments tonight and I want you to stand with me and we'll we'll um, we'll pray together and and I just ask you to pray for for um, whatever God lays on your heart and give you some time to pray and and then I'll and then I'll lead us in prayer so if you'd stand with me let's pray together Lord, I want to thank you for the privilege to be here tonight and, and to study uh, your word and your truth, Lord. And there, there's no greater truth, there's no uh, greater book, there's no greater knowledge than what we find in your scripture, Lord, and what it means to, to our lives and how it shows us who you are and how it changes uh, who we are. And so, Lord, I pray that um, as we study your word tonight, as, as we study it in our classes, that your Holy Spirit would, would lead and guide us and that you would bless it, Lord, in, into our hearts. Lord, I thank you for the worship that, that we uh, have today and, and, Lord, to be able just to gather as a church and, and Lord, uh, to, to show you the respect you deserve and to, sh and to demonstrate, Lord, that, um, Lord, that our lives are to be lived for you uh, every single day. And I thank you, Lord, that as we worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord, that you encourage and inspire us, Lord, uh, to overcome and, and to become who you call us to be. And Lord, I, I thank you, Lord, uh, for our country, and I lift our country up to you tonight, Lord, and, and we are in such trying times from, from uh, dealing with uh, uh, pandemic and this illness, Lord, to, to the uh, political upheavals all, all over, to the, the chaos, uh, the violence, Lord, um, there's just so many things that's taking place in our country, Lord, and, and Lord, I pray, I, I pray that you would raise up leaders, Lord, um, who, who base their decisions, Lord, on your truth, and, and Lord, I pray for the gospel, Lord, to shine bright uh, in our country. I pray, Lord, uh, for revival in, in hearts and in homes and in communities uh, all across this land, Lord. And I pray, God, that you, you would guide uh, our elections, Lord, every one of them, from, from our local uh, elections to our state elections, Lord, to, to our national election. I pray that your hand would, would guide the way. And, and Lord, we pray, for, uh, we pray for our nation, Lord, to, to return to you in every way and, and be one nation, Lord, uh, uh, truly under God. And, and I pray for the Christian truth and values, Lord, uh, to uh, to be all across our land, and Lord, I, I pray for our schools as they continue back in in um, in, in their in their classes and all uh, their sports and all this all that takes place. And I pray, God, that you would uh, protect our children, protect our, our young people, and protect our teachers, Lord, and, and all those that work within our schools. And we pray, God, that that you would help us to to overcome this virus, Lord, and, and just to move forward. In, in who um, in, in how we need to live our lives and help us to do it in a way Lord that's that's different and, and in a way that that truly is a return to you Lord uh, that we truly value what's important and live for what's important Lord as we um, come out of this pandemic Lord thank you that we can gather tonight and study your word and stand in your presence Lord and I pray God that you would speak to our hearts and I ask this in Jesus name Amen
Thank you. You may, you may be seated. All right. Um, we're going to start tonight in Hebrews chapter 13. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13. We're going to look at a particular passage there uh, this evening in Hebrews chapter 13. Now, uh, last time that, uh, that we talked, you know, I reminded you that, uh, you know, we've all received a package uh, from, from whether UPS, you know, the brown truck pulls up, um, the, the carrier gets out, he gives you your package, he gets back in his truck, and he takes off. And uh, that carrier has one job, and that job is to deliver that package uh, from point A to point B, from the company in which you bought it from to your house, and to deliver that package unhindered, unbroken, fully intact, without altering it in any way. That's his job. And that is a good example of the ministry of angels. Angels are those spiritual beings who operate between the spiritual realm and the earthly realm. They are God's messengers. They do his bidding. They deliver his messages in this world. In Hebrews 1.14, it says, Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? And then look with me in Hebrews 13.2. In uh, verse 1, it says, Keep on loving each other as brothers, and do not forget to entertain strangers. For by doing so, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. You can also translate that. Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers, because some people have welcomed in angels uh, without knowing it. So what is the ministry of the angels? And so I want to look at four specific ministries that Scripture talks about of God's messengers. The first is this. Angels are messengers of God's word. They are messengers of God's word. In Scripture, we see the angels have shared in the responsibility of ensuring the integrity of communicating God's word. Now, in Stephen's defense before the religious leaders in Acts chapter 7, in verse 53, Peter says, You, meaning the Jewish people, have received the law that was given through angels. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 2, talking also about the Old Testament law, it says, For since the message spoken through angels was binding. Now, you'd say, wait a minute, I, I thought the Holy Spirit inspired the word of God. Yes, the Holy Spirit did inspire the Word of God. But we understand that the Holy Spirit is God. the Fa God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And we don't know the exact dynamic between the Holy Spirit, who is God, and the work of His angels. But we know that Scripture is very specific that as the Holy Spirit inspired the written Word which you hold in your hand, we also know that angels were involved in overseeing the transmission the protection, and preserving the integrity of the written word that you have. We also see that not only were the angels involved in preserving, protecting the written word, but we also see that angels were a part of delivering the message about the living word, the birth of Jesus Christ. When you read the Christmas story, you find angels everywhere as part of their work and their job. In, uh, in Luke chapter 1, you see that the angels appeared to Zechariah. They appeared to Mary to make these very special announcements, particularly the announcement of Jesus' birth. You also see the angels appeared to the shepherds to announce when Jesus was born. You see in Matthew chapter 1 and Matthew chapter 2 that an angel of the, of the Lord appeared to Joseph three times specifically to instruct him and to guide him concerning the Christ child. So we see that the angels were messengers of God's word. They sent the message of God's word. But we also see that angels were messengers of God's protection. Protection. There's a great story in the Old Testament that highlights this point, and it comes from 2 Kings uh, chapter 6, verses 8 through 23. There the prophet Elijah had been informed had been informing the king of Israel about every move that the enemy king of Iran was making. And so this upset the king of Aram, 
And so he sent his troops to capture Elijah and to get rid of him. So the large military force surrounds the city where Elijah was staying, and this is what happens next. In verse 15, when the servant of the man of God got up and he went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. This was Elijah's response. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the servant, and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. As the enemy came toward him, Elijah prayed to the Lord, Strike this army with blindness. And he struck them with blindness, as Elijah had asked. So you see, God sent his angels protecting Elijah. But go to the New Testament. In Acts chapter 12, you find Peter has been arrested and he's in jail. He's shackled in this inner cell. And what takes place? An angel shows up. Takes off his shackles. Gets Peter up. Leads him out. The, the doors of the jail open all along the way. And he leads him out. Peter thinks he's dreaming. Until he gets completely outside and free from danger. And then he wakes up. And in verse 11 it says this. Then Peter came to himself and he said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches, and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. So as believers, we need to realize that, that God has his angels standing guard around us. Through faith, we need to open our eyes and, and see that God is in control. He is at work every day in your life. You are never alone. God is there, and his protection is there. We'll probably never realize until we get to heaven how many times God sent his angels to bail us out on earth. The third thing I want you to see is this. Angels are God's messenger, are messengers of God's provisions. provisions. So they're messengers of God's word. They're messengers of God's protection. They're messengers of God's provisions. We see this clearly throughout the Old Testament. Speaking of God providing food for the Israelites during their period of wandering in the wilderness, Psalm 78 says this, verse 23 and 25. Yet he gave a command to the skies above, and he opened the doors of heaven. He rained down manna for the people to eat. He gave them grain of heaven. Human beings ate the bread of angels. He sent them all the food they could eat. When Elijah was running from Jezebel and he was out there in the desert and he had collapsed, weary, depressed, and discouraged under that tree. In verse 5 and 7 it says this, All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over the hot coals and a jar of water. So angels know how to cook. He ate and he drank and then he laid down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. Messengers of God's provision. But I love this provision. In Matthew chapter 4, after Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness, after he had undergone the great intensity of Satan's temptation upon him. And he resisted the devil with it is written on every, at, on every occasion. It says in verse 11, Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. They are messengers of God's provision. But they're also messengers of God's judgment. You know, we talk about God, and the Scripture gives us this great picture that God is loving, He is compassionate, He is merciful, He is gracious. The Bible tells us that God is good. But part of God's goodness is the fact that He is holy, He is righteous, and He is just. Because God is good and because God is just, 
God will judge sin. And God will judge wickedness and God will judge evil. In Hebrews 10, 26 and 27 and then 30 and 31, it talks about a person that goes on rejecting Jesus Christ. And this is what it says. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth. In other words, if you know, if you've heard about Jesus and you deliberately reject him and keep on living your life your way. It says there's no sacrifice left for your sin because only Jesus' sacrifice saves you. But listen to this. There is only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. That's what you can expect if you reject Jesus and continue to do so. There's no sacrifice of your sin and you stand under the condemnation of God. And you will experience God's judgment. For we know it says that God has said it is mine to revenge. I will repay. The Lord will judge his people. And then it says it is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And do you know who carries out God's judgment? His angels do. Regarding the plagues upon Egypt. And I, get you, I bet you Egypt would stand up today and tell you how dreadful it was to fall into the hands of of God. In Psalm 78, 49, it says that he cast upon them the, fierce, the fierceness of his anger, wrath, indignation, and trouble by sending angels of destruction among them. In Matthew chapter 13, when Jesus gives the parable of the end times, the parable of the wheat and the tares, it says, then the Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will Gather out of his kingdom all the things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and they will cast them into the furnace of fire. In the parable of the dragnet, Matthew 13, 49, it says, So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come forth and separate the wicked from among the just and cast them into the furnace of fire. Now I mentioned in Acts chapter 12 that an angel delivered Peter from from uh, prison and from Herod Agrippa and the Jewish leaders. But when you come to the close of Acts chapter 12, you find an angel bringing God's judgment upon Herod Agrippa. Herod Agrippa got up and he gave a big political speech. And all of the people began to applaud and stand and say that he, he was like a God speaking. And this is what happened next. And the people kept shouting, the voice of a God and not of a man then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God and he was eaten by worms and died. God's messengers of judgment. You go to the book of Revelation and you find the angels at the end times carrying out God's wrath and judgment upon the world. In chapter 15 it says, verse 1, Then I saw another sign in heaven, a great and marvelous sign, Seven angels having the seven last plagues, and for in them the wrath of God is complete. So whenever you see the judgment of God, you see his angels at work in the process. There's messengers of judgment. The last thing I want you to see is this. Angels are messengers of God's guidance. All through scripture we see God guiding his people toward his purpose. For their good and ultimately God's glory. And the ministering angels are typically a part of this process. Let's go to the Christmas story once again. Now there in the Christmas story, after Jesus is born and, and the wise men come and present their gifts and worship him. The threat of Jesus, Jesus' life is threatened by King Herod who's out to seek and destroy him. And what takes place? Just in the nick of time, Matthew 2.13. Now when they had departed, meaning the wise men, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother. Flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. God's guidance sent from an angel. 
But consider this. Consider the work of the church in advancing the gospel, as Jesus said, to the ends of the earth. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. When you go to Acts chapter 8, you find Philip, one of the first deacons. And it says that now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. So Philip arose and he went. And what does he find when he goes where the angel has guided him? He finds an Ethiopian official reading the scriptures. And then what's interesting is it changes in the, in the, in the guidance and it says, then the Spirit, then the Spirit led Philip. So the angel gave him guidance in the path that God wanted him to take. And then once he got there, when it was time to share the gospel, the Spirit took over and empowered him. And what happens? The Ethiopian receives Christ, is baptized, and carries the gospel back to Ethiopia, which could be considered part of the ends of the earth. Satan will always work to distract you, to draw you away from God's path, to take you off course of God's purpose in your life. But God always has a course. He always has a path for you to take toward His will and toward His purpose. That's why it's important that we stay connected, that we stay committed. Because God will work. He will work. His angels will show up with guidance when needed. And His Spirit will always take over to lead you in the right path. That's why you go to the wisdom of Scripture that says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. So let's close with this. In his book, Angels, Billy Graham relates a story told by Reverend John G. Patton. He, uh, Mr. Patton, or Reverend Patton, was a missionary in the South Pacific in the New, New, uh, New Hebrides Islands. <clears throat> One night, uh, Patton and his wife, the story goes, uh, found themselves threatened by the hostile natives who surrounded their mission headquarters. The Pattons thought for sure that the natives would burn down the headquarters and kill them both. They prayed throughout the night, asking God to protect them from harm. The next morning, they were astonished when they realized that the natives had gone. They had no idea where or why they had left. The missionaries again prayed, and they thanked God for saving them. About a year later, the chief of the native tribe who had threatened them became a Christian. And he, was, he came to visit the Patton's. When he was asked about the incident of that night of terror, the chief told the Pattons that he and his men were too fearful to carry out their plans of attack. They had seen an army of giant men in, quote, shining garments with drawn swords in their hands surrounding the mission ground. Patton and the chief agreed together that there was no other explanation than God had sent his angels to keep his missionaries safe from harm. Remember, God is always at work around us. We simply need to seek him, to trust him, and to be open to however he chooses to provide, to protect, and to guide us. And as Hebrews 13, 2 says, don't forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing. Lord, thank you for your word and thank you for the way that you work. Lord, you have your ministering spirits all around. You have your messengers, Lord. Lord, I pray that we, like the angels, would be surrendered to you, seeking to serve you and, and be obedient to you. For as the angel told John, not to worship him, but to worship God. Lord, help us likewise to be your servants who worship you completely and totally. 
Help us, Lord, to open our eyes, to see the, the spiritual realm around us, and to realize just how important it is as you carry out your purposes around us, as you guide us on your paths, as you fulfill your purpose. Help us to be assured and confident that you hold us in your hand and nothing can snatch us out, that you will protect, you will provide, you will guide, and you will give us your word for every occasion because you are faithful. Lord, help us to be assured of that and help us to live with that confidence every day that you're going to work in and through us to accomplish your purpose for our lives. And Lord, you're going to send your angels whenever we need it, wherever we need it, to provide, protect, and guide. And we thank you for it. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.